welcome. It's great to have you with us on this beautiful first service in 2015. This year, whether you're actually experiencing it here with us in 2015 or 10 years later, this is a time of creation. This is a time when that beautiful spiritual being that you are brings forth that which is greater. And as we focus on that beautiful creative process, we're grateful that you're joining us and that you're bringing your creative energy to bless us. And we hope that we're able to bless you. Thank you. Welcome to Unity of Walnut Creek. Please remain seated and join us in singing our opening song, This is the Year. Wonderful, wonderful, fortunate you. This is the year that your dreams come true. This is the year that your ships come in. This is the year you find Christ within. This is the year that will be glad to live. This is the year you have much to give. This is the year you know the truth. This is the year when you find new you. This is the year that will bring happiness. This is the year you will live to bless. Wonderful, wonderful, fortunate you. This is the year that your dreams come true. Devo. And today we have a guest singer, and her name is Liz Rickahern. My name is Ron, and it is my pleasure to welcome you again to Unity of Walnut Creek. God, you guys just make me smile. There's all these beautiful faces out here. So, Please join me in welcoming our online guests. Well, not our online guests, our online brothers and sisters. So if you turn around, and please say thank you. Hello, and we are very glad to have you here and know that you are part of our spiritual community. And if you're new here to Unity, here in the sanctuary, a special welcome to you. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy, Happy New, Year. New Year. Great. So Unity is a positive spiritual path. 
This means that whether you're in an uncomfortable situation, a comfortable situation, whether pain is with you or whether joy is with you, God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Let's do that again. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Yes. Doesn't that feel good? So that's one of the universal truths that we here at Unity focus on. Another universal truth is that we know that there are as many paths to God as there are human beings' hearts on this planet. And we respect every one of them. So you may hear some music or some teachings from some other spiritual paths, and that is because we celebrate each and every one of those paths. And we respect them, and we know that they lead to that one place, that divine presence, that loving divine presence that is within us all. So let us open our service by focusing on that loving divine presence with an affirmation prayer. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. We'll take a deep breath and let that deeper into your heart. And let's repeat that again. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. And take a deeper breath and let that in ever deeper. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Please remain seated and join us in our next song. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. so grateful I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful for all that I have I am so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful we are so blessed. We are so blessed. We are so grateful for all that we have. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. We are so grateful. We are so blessed. thing to know how really blessed we are that's a beautiful place to enter into our time of prayer and meditation together so take that deep breath through your heart and as you breathe in the awareness of this love in which we live and move and have our being that is blessing and caring for us every moment and as you breathe out gently resting open receptive and I invite you to let these simple words, part of an ancient prayer, 
be that invitation to rest at the very center of your heart. Will join in. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be Father, Mother, God, we do seek to know you more deeply, more completely. We're grateful that this is a time of growing awareness. That in this sacred moment, we become more deeply, more completely aware of your presence. We're grateful that you open our eyes to see your presence in the people around us, in this beautiful earth, in the flow of blessings, and in the opportunities to touch and bless that are in our lives. We're grateful that we can feel your presence as this love that flows through our hearts touching blessing all around us. We're grateful that as we begin this experience of new creation, this new year that is before us, that we know that it is your divine love that brings it forth, that calls forth the goodness, the blessing, the wholeness that we step into in this beautiful, sacred creation. And in this moment, we are grateful to know that you are the peace within our hearts. And we are grateful to have the opportunity to for a moment simply let go, to be still and know your presence, to still the mind, for it is not, not through the mind that this experience unfolds, but rather we journey into that still place at the center of our hearts where in this place of wholeness, of love, of peace, of stillness, we know our oneness with you. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know.
Mother God. We take this moment to simply breathe together the feeling of love. To breathe it in as though filling with your presence of divine love. To breathe it out, sending it out to bless all around us. Breathing it in, awakening us, lifting us, healing us. Breathing it out, blessing, healing, guiding. as we embrace this awareness of your presence in us as this that we call love. We are so grateful for the opportunity to send this love forth to heal and bless and uplift. And we start by sending this love into our own bodies to heal every cell and system to call forth the wholeness within our beings, to attune to that pure, radiant pattern that is this divine presence that is in every cell and system, this love and light that guides us and illumines us. And as we breathe this love, sending it out to everyone who is dear to us. With this love, we enfold each one. Each one is lifted, blessed, healed, guided. And this divine love flows through our hearts across this spiritual community becoming a part of each one and blessing everyone in their world. We embrace every prayer request brought here. We know with each you are enfolded in divine love and lifted to that which is the highest. Beloved Presence, we're grateful that this divine love flows through our hearts out across the communities in which we live, across our nation, on to bless the peoples of the world, calling forth their wisdom and the peace within their hearts. And this love flows from our hearts. We share it with all who join us in prayer, whether in mosque or synagogue, temple or church, whether gathered at home or on the hillside. For in seeking to know you, we are all one. And this love flows through our hearts. We send it to bless this beautiful earth, to bring harmony and balance to her systems, to bless her creatures. And we send this love about the earth to touch the heart of every single person in the earth. For you are that love in every heart. And in this love, we are one. Divine love flows through my heart enfolding and blessing the world. Please join me. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And again. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Feeling that love, touching that oneness 
once again. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Be still and know that I am God. And from that stillness, from that very center of being, in the presence of the radiant love within each one here, we are grateful. It is so. Amen. my pleasure to highlight a few of the upcoming activities here at um, Unity Center, beginning with Birthday Sunday. If you have a birthday this month, please stand so we can celebrate you. Classes are a new, inspiring way to meet people at Unity. 
The classes are designed to explore spiritual understandings while getting to know others who are also desiring spiritual growth. This four-week class begins this afternoon at 2 p.m. Also, at 4 p.m. this afternoon, manifest the year of your dreams through the amazing power of your heart. Reverend David will lead us in this seldom shared technique, hologramming, a heart math tool that energizes the higher potential in our soul's blueprint into manifestation. Our spiritual <coughs> learning classes start on the second Monday of this month. The curriculum committee has made a wonderful selection of classes to enlighten you, connect you to your divine source, teach you wellness techniques, and so much more. So until you hear the gong, please take a moment to greet the people around you. <laughs> remain standing and join us in this call and response. Mitch will do the call, you and I will do the response. Let me 
Thank you, God, for blue fairies. <laughs> so you took me right back to that, that beautiful story, and in a couple weeks, in the class it starts, we get to do the fairy tales. And that one's right at the top of the list. So, what <laughs> fun. New Year. How many have New Year's resolutions? How many? Okay. Oh, well, that's, that's most of us. Okay. How many have broken at least one already? <laughs> okay, good, good. I, I, love the, I love this experience. We're at a, a time of tremendous creative power. You know, when, when you have a whole culture that stops and does a moment of reflection, that's an amazing thing. And, and that's very powerful. And then we come up with that and we say, okay, and there's things I want to create. And so we make that conscious decision. When we were having our burning bowl service, uh, we'd gone through the process of, you know, taking the things that we no longer served us, taking them out, burning them up, letting them go, and then writing our letters to God, affirming that which was really ours for this coming year. And so people were coming up, and I thought, well, you know what? There's some things that... I, I really want to have happen this year. So I wrote them down, and then I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. I looked at the, the first one, and it was, it was all about health and well-being, and, you know, really nice, except it had some very specific things like exercising and losing weight and that sort of stuff on it. Okay, anybody touch any of those areas this year? Ah. <laughs> Okay, I just so I'm not alone. Okay. And I looked at it, and then I realized, I really don't care. <laughs> okay, so what's that about? Well, what, what happens is when, when we look at our year and we look at our things is our mind is just so skilled at coming up with what's wrong with us and how to fix it. Okay, it just does that, and so it gives us a task list, because it's good at task lists. And then what it's also good at is, a couple weeks later, it's great at guilt. 
So you can look and say, oh, I didn't do it. Woe is me. There's something more wrong with me. Okay. And so we get into the, and the problem is where we're doing that creation from. Because when I looked at it, I didn't want those things. I actually said, well, what does my heart want? Why did I write that down? Because I really don't care about those things. But when I looked at my heart, what I realized there were things I did care about. And they were having the energy and the agility to go hiking with my grandkids and floating down rivers and exploring this beautiful world that we live in. And having all the energy to do that whenever I wanted. That's what my heart wanted. That's what made a difference to me. And when I thought about it, when I touched that, I don't have any problem getting up and going out and being active. But another to-do thing on my to-do list doesn't inspire me. What happens is, there is a desire within us to create. It's part of who we are. And when we say yes to that, what part of it are we saying yes to? There's a, a, an amazing uh, metaphysician, Emily Cady. I've shared her with you often. And, and she talks about the two parts of us as, as individuals. She describes part of us as what she calls the personality. Okay, it's this that we've defined ourselves to be, that we identify ourselves as. And it, it works through the mind, so we're able to categorize ourselves and say, well, this is, this is my work, and this is my role, and this is, this is what my body's like, and this is what my mind's like, and here's my politics, and here's my finances, and so I'm, I can define myself. And then... She talks about this other part of the self. She calls it our individuality. And it's that individual expression of your being that you were before you ever entered into this earth experience. It is this wise connection with the divine that journeys through and uses this personality in its learning, in its growing, in its creating, in expressing its purpose. But it is not that personality. It was that part of me that said, yeah, I want to play and connect with these who are important to my life. I want to enjoy this gorgeous creation that we live in. That came from that individuality. There's a a couple scriptures from different traditions that, that touch this creative process differently. First from, from the Bible, from the New Testament, 1 Corinthians. It's God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? Okay, it's that... God gives the increase. In other words, the creation, this new creation that wants to come forth through each of us, this, that we're going to create and express this year, that's that divine creative power and presence in us itself. And when we say yes to that, something very beautiful is created. And we get to experience it. from the ancient Chinese wonderful Lao Tzu. 
and the confusing Lao Tzu. <laughs> Translated as, therefore the master has but does not possess, acts but does not expect. When her work is done, she forgets it. That is why it lasts forever. Has, but does not possess. Your mind can't do that. If it's got something, it's got to control it and figure it out and do all that sort of stuff with it. Okay? The mind goes like this. The heart goes like this. When her work is done, she forgets it. That is why it lasts forever. In other words, we're not talking about a form here. Like, I have to create this form, I have to create that form. What we're talking about is the creation of a greater consciousness. And once that consciousness is created, it is created. It is a part of who we are. And then, also from Lao Tzu, in work, do what you enjoy. When you are content to be simply yourself and don't compare or compete, everyone will respect you. Now, the concept of respect here is being in harmony with the world around us. When we don't need to compare or compete, your mind has to compare and compete. That's how it does things. It figures out more than, less than, closer than, farther than. That's just the way it works, and that's okay. The truth is we have made marvelous creations with our mind. But it's time to go to the next level, isn't it? We know that. So in this understanding of Lao Tzu, let me share with you a contemporary translation of uh, what I've just read to you. A Zen student asked his master, is it okay to use email? <laughs> yes, replied the master, but no attachments. Okay. Pure Lao Tzu. So what, what we're looking at is how do we create with the heart? How do we get out of that mind thing and make it? And it's, and it's really by uh, knowing what our heart wants to express. Now this afternoon in, in the holographic workshop, what we're looking at there is using the energy of the heart to activate, to energize that which we are choosing and creating. But the core choice underneath it all is to make that choice to say yes to our hearts. To recognize, okay, I can do all this through my head, but what do I really, really want? What is the real desire to, to bring forth? So I, you know, on my sheet there, I start around, okay, get the book published. Okay, that, that showed up, and then it occurred to me, I don't care about publishing a book. I already did that. <laughs> Doesn't make any difference. <laughs> Never has made any money. <laughs> What's the deal? And then I had to ask my heart, so what is this about? And my heart didn't look at publishing a book at all. What my heart said was something very, very beautiful has been shared with you. And to share it with someone else is a sacred opportunity. It has touched your life and meant so much to you. What an opportunity to let someone else's life be blessed. Now that I can do. That would get me up and sitting down at a computer. Get up and publish the book won't. It's a different place from which we create. We had the opportunity to 
uh, be in Seattle uh, this last week and with our grandchildren. And so we're sitting around and we're talking and my granddaughter, uh, Fiona, who's 11, was sitting there and she had a little computer in her lap and all the time we were talking, she was typing. And she would interact and we'd talk and then she'd go back to typing. Finally, well, what, what, what are you typing? What are you doing? Oh, it's a story. So I asked her mother, tell, tell me a little more about the story. Well, she's done two books already. <laughs> I've only done one. <laughs> she's 11. But every time we were together, she was there. And so, you know, the, the wonderful thing is they can do that, and it's all online now, so I can go and read her book online. <laughs> she's, an, uh, she's a virtual author. That works. So I, I went, and it was amazing what she's written. So all this talent and this beautiful creation, this, this world for children and young people that was coming alive in her words. And she was just enjoying it thoroughly, typing away, no matter what happened. She got a little time, she'd go, she'd go write on her stories. You know, we'd be doing something, we'd have to go get her because she was there. That was what was fulfilling her heart. It reminded me of a woman who shared the experience of, uh, she kind of began the identification with it at graduation from college. She graduated when she was 21, and she said, over the next seven years, what she accomplished was complete failure. She had uh, married, and by that time, the marriage had fallen apart, so she was now the single mother of this little girl. And she had all this wonderful education. So she went out and got a job and find she found out she couldn't support herself. So she was at the point now where the, she, she had to use public assistance in order to eat and provide for her daughter. And when she looked at that, complete failure an interesting thing happened. Her fear left. She realized all her life she'd been afraid of failure. Her parents had been, for, had been poor and had helped her understand how important it is to succeed, to be able to make it through life okay. And she had already failed. She didn't have anything else to fear. Yeah, they were going to make it through. Was it uncomfortable and painful? Yeah, it was. Was it really difficult? Yeah, it was. Were they going to survive? Yes, they would. So she wasn't afraid. So for the first time, she said, what is it that I want to do? Because she'd followed everybody else's instruction. You know, her folks had told her how important education was, so she went and she got that, and they all, everybody had good advice on what, what job she should do and how she should get all this money so that she'd live okay and succeed. And she'd done that, and it hadn't worked. What did she want to do? Now, what reminded me of her was she had a thing kind of like my granddaughter. You know, kind of every break in the job, she'd be there, writing stories. Now, she loved children's stories. And one of her favorite times was at night when she'd get to share her stories with her daughter, those wonderful bedtime stories. So she already figured she'd failed. What difference did it make? She understood that children's story writers don't make much money, if any. But that was what she wanted to do. So she let herself do it. And her story became a part of our world as Harry Potter. <laughs> J.K. Rowling is a billionaire. Now, that was never on her goal. She quit caring about the money. She quit caring about the form. She let herself do what her heart was calling her to do, to be who she was. And her life began to express the beauty, the sensitivity, the creativity 
of her being. Now that was hers. But within each of us, there is an intention to create this year. We are going to bring forth a creation. Would we like to do it consciously? Would we like it to be the completion of the task list or what our heart really desires? So it's a very simple question. Will I say yes to my heart this year? Will I say yes to my heart this year? Simple, simple question. If you want to create from that place, I will say yes to my heart. Join me. I will say yes to my heart. Doesn't it feel good? That's, it is so important. It's so beautiful within you. Again, I will say yes to my heart. Let that beautiful, divine, creative force that you are, create what really fulfills your being. Again, I say yes to my heart. That powerful connection that you have with that individuality, that wise, ancient, powerful, beautiful, magnificent spiritual being. What you bring forth this year, as you do that, if you're willing to do that, to express that commitment again and again this year, then what is created will be a huge blessing to every single one of us for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ministers are available after the service today to offer prayer support for challenges and celebrations. You may have seen them around the sanctuary and grounds praying with others. Our heart ministers are wearing the lavender stoles. Also, your prayer request can be sent anytime from our website. So I ask everyone to take a connection card from the seat pocket in front of you. We invite each of you to take a moment to fill out the card if you have a prayer request, a question, or a comment. If you're new to Unity, you're invited to fill out the card and to stop by the welcome table on the patio. We look forward to meeting you. Thank you for checking the box if you're joining us in our weekly spiritual focus. Our spiritual focus this week is, I say yes to my heart. The ushers will receive your card with the offering toward the end of the music. So it's time for our prosperity celebration. For credit card donations, there are envelopes in the seat back in front of you. For those of you at home, just click on the donate button on the Watch Live page. Unity's co-founder, Charles Fillmore, taught that our spiritual connection opens us to God's abundance expressing in our lives. He said, be thankful for every blessing that you gain and grateful for every demonstration as if it were an unexpected treasure dropped in your lap. This will keep your heart fresh for true thanksgiving may be likened to the rain falling upon ready soil, refreshing it and increasing its productiveness. I invite you to take your tithe or offering in your hand and be aware that God is the source of all of our good. 
and let's repeat our affirmation together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful.
And as we bless our children, joining me is Reverend Suzanne Leonard, who has served this beautiful ministry. <laughs> Good to have her home. Together, children, you are love, special and important. The light of God shines through you. So let's take hands and share our prayer of protection together. Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And our peace song. the love and the light and the peace in the earth right now. So let it shine and have fun. Thank you. <laughs>